Hey, what's up? I'm Norris. Welcome back to another sew along. Now, today is my very first sew along for Nomi Patterns, and I'm super excited. And a special shout out to Mimi G Style because she has made this happen in her role as vice president. Also, I want to shout out a couple other male designers. Sins of Mini, he has a new bomber jacket, which is ME2010, which is the pattern number. So definitely check him out. And then also Julian Curates. He has a nice uh, outfit situation that you can definitely look up and rock and his number is ME2009. Now today I will be doing my very own sew along for my pattern, which is ME2011, a moto jacket. Now if you're new to sewing, I just need a refresher course, you can click the sewing basics video linked in the description box below. If you need more instructions than that, because this is not a learn to sew video, I would advise you to sign up for sewedacademy.com and if you sign up for the free trial, you get the first five courses for free, all right? Let's get started. All right, once again, like I said, we'll be working on my latest pattern design with Nomi, and it's ME2011, which is the number, and it's a moto jacket. Now this is a traditional classic moto jacket with some fine details that I created for it. And if you look in the back, you'll see all the fabric suggestions, leather, faux leather, cotton blends, wool blends, denim, um, anything with like a heavy, you know what I'm saying, nice stern uh, material you can use and then you'll need lining and also lightweight inter fusible interfacing. Um, now, if you're using a leather, sometimes it might be difficult to like put that fusible interfacing on it. And I actually didn't use any, any interfacing for my leather one. It has a nice weight to it that you probably wouldn't need to interface it. Um, also, what I do wanna note, every time um, I go into these sew alone tutorials or whatever, I want to show you that you, we have a finished garment measurement on the back of the pattern. You can look at your chest and your waist, which is probably gonna be the most important ones for this particular pattern. So you can measure and then you can look and match them up with your finished garment measurement. Now, you don't want it to be your exact measurement. You want a little bit more ease, so like a couple of inches bigger. And if that matches up with a close measurement to you, then you go up to cut your particular size. So with all that being said, before we go into all the pattern pieces, I want to shout out um, the other menswear designers as well. We have Julian Curates and his is ME2009. And you can see this nice design that he has. Um, he has a two piece top and the bottom and then all the details on the back. So definitely check out for his tutorial because he, he'll be doing his tutorial. And then also Sins of Many, which is um, Scorpio Nose, um, you can definitely um, look up his tutorial to make this fire bomber jacket as well, okay? So I just wanted to shout him out one more time and we can move on to all the pattern pieces for my pattern. Um, the very first pattern piece we have is pattern piece number five. Now this is the welt. You wanna cut one of these out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 17, the epaulette or the tab, um, you wanna cut two of these out of fabric and also two of these out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 12, now this is the side back. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. Pattern piece number four, this is the flap. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 21, this is the lower right facing. You wanna cut one out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 13, this is, the, this is the back facing. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and two out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 15, this is the upper collar. You wanna cut one of these out of fabric. And then next is pattern piece number 16, this is the under collar. You wanna cut one out of fabric and then one out of interfacing. So this is the one you will be cutting out of interfacing. Pattern piece number six, this is the small pocket. Um, now this is the lining. You wanna cut this out of your lining and you wanna cut one of these. Pattern piece number 11, this is the upper back. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric. Pattern piece number 10, this is the side panel. You wanna cut two of these out of fabric and two of these out of lining. Pattern piece number 25, this is the undersleeve. You wanna cut two of fabric and two of lining. And then down here to the bottom, it says cut one and a half shorter for lining. So you want to measure up 
one and a half inches and put a line and then that's where you want to cut the, the line, lining piece. But then for your fabric piece, you want to cut all the way down. And then the same thing for the upper sleeve. Now you want to cut, this is pattern piece number 23. You want to cut two of these out of fabric and two out of lining. And this little cutout here at the bottom, you only want to do that for the fabric piece and you want to keep that for the lining, but you do want to measure up one and a half inches up here for the lining piece, okay? Pattern piece number 19, this is the left front lining. You want to cut one of these out of lining. Pattern piece number 20, this is the back lining. You want to cut two of these out of your lining. Pattern piece number 18, this is the front, this is the left front facing. So you want to cut one of these out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 14, this is the lower back. You want to cut one of these on the fold, which is right here. Pattern piece number 22, this is the lower left facing. You want to cut one of these out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number nine, this is a this is the left belt. You want to cut one out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Pattern piece number two, now this is the front. You want to cut two of these out of fabric and one out of interfacing. One of these is going to be the front, and then the second piece that we cut is going to be the front facing. All right, it don't necessarily say it, but this is what we're going to be using this for. And then the one that's going to be interface is going to be the facing part. Now, this right here cut right side up is going to be the facing because when you turn it right sides facing to attach it to the other piece to create um, that full front facing, when we get to order of construction, you'll see a little bit more in detail. But um, if you're unsure, you can just cut your interfacing, but don't fuse it on either side so you'll know which one you shouldn't do, okay? Pattern piece number seven, now this is the carrier. You want to cut one of these out of fabric. Pattern piece number 26, this is the pocket. You want to cut three of these out of your lining. Pattern piece number eight, you see, this is the right belt. You want to cut one of these out of fabric and then one out of interfacing. And pattern piece number one, this is the right front. You want to cut one of these out of fabric and then you want to cut one out of lining. Last but not least, pattern piece number three, this is the left front and you want to cut one of these out of fabric. Now before, we go into cutting it out of the fabric. Um, you want to make sure when you cut it out of fabric, you want to put every single marking that you see because it's going to be so important when it comes to the order of construction because these every single mark means something. So when you're super accurate on where you put these markings, it's going to be easier for um, placements and also for construction. So once you have everything cut out of fabric and every interface fused onto the pattern piece that it's supposed to be on, we can begin order of construction. Okay, so before we put the zipper in, there are two different techniques I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna show you the first method, and then after that, I'm gonna show you the second way, which is a little bit easier if you want to do that one. Um, the difference is between the two is when you open it up, you will have the zipper in between the lining, um, and the other option is not like that. You will just have the zipper right behind the lining, and you will just be top stitching it down, okay? So just keep that in mind so you can choose which one you want to do. Okay, so the very first thing that we will be doing, we will be doing all of the zippers, okay, and then also the welt pockets. Now, the three zippers in the front, the one here for the pocket, the upper pocket, and then the one that's on the other side are all basically the same. And then the welt pocket has a little different um, pocket bag, and obviously we'll be putting a welt and a flap. Um, here, but first I want to start with the other zipper now. I'm using a 22 inch zipper Now you do not need any zipper this long, but this is all I had and um, This is a good way to do it, especially if you're kind of new to this. So basically We have to know the position of the zipper So since this is the left front you'll be putting your hand in like this which means you want to zip that zipper down so it'll be going down in this direction. So I'm holding it the right way. So first, I want you to take a look at your lining. So I've created a facing um, that does not come with this uh, pattern. So basically, I, I measure from the middle of my binding box down. So I measured down and that gave me two and a quarter inches. 
So I cut this out two and a quarter inches and I finished off, as you can see here, this end of the facing and I placed it with, ha with half of the raw edge in the middle. All right, so once I measure that up together, obviously the binding box is going to be a full uh, half inch and so it's so it's gonna stick out a quarter inch and then you want to base that down from one end of the binding box to the other end of the binding box so you can see your complete binding box okay so mine is a half inch all the way down from the stitching to the mark of the binding box okay now I place that on top too so that right there goes on top now this right here is to prevent you seeing the lining when you open up your zipper. So this one is already done. So when I open up my zipper, you will see denim first instead of the actual lining. Now if I pull this out, you'll see the rest of the lining. So that's the goal. I, I do not like seeing um, lining when I open up my, my jackets or any of my pockets. So if you don't mind that, you don't have to do this particular step. Um, and basically it's an easy pattern to make you honestly don't even need to make a pattern just you can just mark on your fabric So I did six and three quarters of an inch this way and then for the width of it I did two and a quarter inches and then that's how I got that. Okay Now this right here is with the right side facing up So we're going to be stitching wrong side. So I'm going to basically do it like this I'm going to move this to the side for just a moment and now we're just going to focus on the lining piece for right now. So you want your zipper tape face down and we're going to be working on the top part of the zipper. So the, since the binding box is going to be a half inch wide, we want to see what a half inch wide would be with the zipper um, teeth in the center. Okay, so that would that would give me just a little over eighth of an inch on both sides of my zipper. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab my chalk and I want to just come to my zipper and I want to measure from the teeth from my coils just a little bit over an eighth of an inch. Do that down for a few inches. Okay. So if you look closely, I have markings on both sides. Now this is gonna be a guide to put the stitching exactly where I want it because I don't want too much space um, for my zipper tape and I don't want too little space that I can't zip the zipper up. So if I measure that half inch, I should have a line exactly with the, on both ends of the half inch, okay? If you can see that like that. And then the next thing I'm gonna do to, to prep this is to take a needle and thread and I'm going to go about a quarter inch away from the tip of the zipper pull and I'm going to just base the ends of the zipper tape together. Okay, so now we have those zipper tape fairly close to each other and when we start sewing you'll see why that's important. I have a guide for the top and also the bottom. So the guide for the top we're going to be using to guide up the, t the bottom of the binding box um, line here. And I can see mine's from the other side. So if you can't see yours from the front, you wanna go ahead and try to match that up with the back too. So I'm just basically gonna take this, this binding box guide and guide it up with the top um, stitching line on my um, zipper tape. And I want the top of my zipper pull to be lined up perfectly I want it to be lined up perfectly with the end of the binding box, okay? I don't want it to be too too short and I want it to be too long, okay? So we want to do it like that and let's go ahead and match those up and pin. So what I do first, I want to go ahead and put that pin exactly where that line is and then once I put it right where I want it, I want to make sure that line is matching up with the line underneath. Okay, so now we're going to go to the machine and we're going to do a basic stitch for it starting from 
the end of the binding box, not all the way to the end of the fabric where the binding box is. So we're gonna start there, back stitch, and then do a basing stitch to the end, and we're gonna back stitch and cut your threads there, okay? So just do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. As you can see, I have that basing stitch, and then because I have that basing stitch on the edge of the facing that I created, we have a full binding box that you can see that measures a half inch all the way across, okay? So this right here is the actual binding box that you can see with the stitching. And then just so you know that I did not do the ends. I don't like doing the ends of the binding box. I keep those open to make it easier for construction. And mind you, if you have to move this zipper, pull down, to get your machine right in these spaces. Once you get to a place, you can cut your thread and then zip this back up and then continue, you know what I'm saying, just so you can get a good placement, okay? So now I'm gonna grab my front, my left front, and I'm gonna move my pocket bag out the way. And then mind you, I put um, a strip of interfacing right where the binding box are going to be. I did the same thing for this one. You probably can't see it right now because I already got it sewn up, but it's good to um, do that if you're not using something like a leather. It just gives it a little bit more stability when we slash and cut, okay? So I'm moving everything out the way and making sure I don't sew anything that I don't want to, that I'm supposed to sew. And then now, so with this bottom stitch right here, it's the bottom of the binding box. So we're basically gonna be matching that up with the binding box here, okay? So this is why I do this, to give you a guide on how, you know what I'm saying, to see it. And then also, it's a little bit more work, but it makes you um, accurate and it's a cleaner finish. So like when you see this right here, you see the lining and then you see the fabric, okay? Um, you don't see the zipper tape stitch onto the lining. This is a really clean way to do it. So now I'm just basically going to match up my binding bottom lines together and I'm going to pin. So I make sure that the ends are in the exact same place and I pin there first. And then a the good thing about having that guideline, you can just basically lay it right on top of the binding box underneath and pin. Now, if you're using a traditional leather or faux leather, you won't be pinning. You'll have to use clamps, okay? So now I'm about to go to the machine and I'm going to stitch starting on one side of the binding box here. And now I'm using a regular stitch now. I'm not, won't be doing a baste. So I want to stitch, regular stitch, all the way down, back stitching at the beginning and also at the end. And then also you can move your zipper tape out the way so you can get it past your um, presser foot, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. All right, so we're back from the machine. Um, the binding box for the bottom is um, stitched down onto um, the front left. So now, before I move forward, I just want to show you I just you want to move back to see exactly where your stitching stops and then right on the other side of the tape you want to put a little line here you want to put a diagonal line like this right where it stops matching up this side and then at the top you want to just pull back and you'll see where your stitching stops you want to put a little diagonal line this way for this side of the zipper tape now just keeping that in mind we're going to go ahead and we're gonna snip right in the center of the binding box. Now through all thicknesses. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch down until I get about five eighths of an inch or so from the end and I'm going to cut diagonally right to my stitching, okay? Now, if you're off from your markings, don't look at your markers anymore. You wanna cut right to two your stitching and then it's just gonna create a little triangle cut out, okay? So you wanna do that to the other side as well. So now that we have this, we're going to take the lining and we're gonna push everything to the inside. Okay, so the top, I mean, so the bottom is gonna stay at the bottom, but it's gonna fold this part up 
you want to make sure you put that zipper in there if your zipper is a little longer and then also the top fold that top in there okay so once we have the zipper tape on the inside and straight all the way down you want to take those triangles on those in the corners and you just want to flip them to the back okay and that'll give you a nice little look on how it's going to look at the end and then also this end too you just want to take it and just tuck it underneath make sure you have those triangles out the way that should be how the ends look all right so if i flip this back you'll see the bottom of that binding box cut and then the lining and then you'll see the other lining underneath with the facing right up under that so let's not worry about if this matches up just yet so we're just going to come here so at this point right here we're going to be doing right size facing with the zipper and also with the pocket bag up here to the top we're going to sandwich it all together but in order to get the zipper tape to lay flat we created a little diagonal line on the bottom on the other side of the zipper tape we just want to cut to that like this until we get to that line that we had and then the same thing on this side over here so on this side over here once I pif flip that back I've got the little diagonal line that I made I'm gonna cut right there so the zipper tape should now be faced up you see the pull here we can pull we can push those corners out after we do the top so now, since we did that cutout, that zipper tape will lay flat. And then the only thing we have to do is sandwich the front, the zipper tape, and then also the pocket bag in three layers. And then we're going to pin. All right, and then we're going to pin. Pin at the very end. And then we're going to continue to make sure that this lays flat pin through all thicknesses and then now here to the top since we did a little slash it should lay flat okay and then I'm going to put another pin there so if I look on the bottom you'll see a stitch line right there that's a quarter inch so we're going to stitch a quarter inch starting right at that slat in the corner of that slash all the way down until we go through that corner of that slash okay so let's do that come back and we'll continue okay so you want to make sure that you can pull your zipper tape a little bit so you can get right in that corner and we're basically going to go right here okay so let me go ahead and put this up in here i want to take my needle put it down in perfect space and like i said we're going to back stitch at the beginning and also at the end using a quarter inch seam allowance You can also use your zipper foot to make it a little bit easier, but I zip that back up and then I can continue all the way down. Okay, so we're back from the machine and I went and tucked those triangles to the side on both sides here. You can see them right there. So while we're here, you want to keep the pocket bag open you want the top to be here and the bottom be open basically when you open it up you don't see anything right here so when you do it this way we have to come and do a top stitch just on the bottom okay so once you want to come here and you want to stitch a quarter inch away from the fold back stitch at the beginning and then also at the end just the way just across so go ahead and do that and then also while you're at the machine you just want to turn up here and be careful of the zipper teeth and you want to basically stitch closing out the side which will give you a clean look on this side so on this side too you just want to take your triangles take them together put them together and then you want to stitch those sides closed and that'll close out the end okay so go ahead and stitch 
top stitch across the top, and then you want to close out both ends where you have your triangles, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so once you close out the ends, you'll see it's nice and secured on both sides right here. And then I went ahead and top stitched just here, okay? Okay, now I can cut off the rest of this zipper here. Okay, and then now I'm gonna turn it like this. And then now with the pocket bag, it's gonna come up a little short. So basically you want to go ahead and pin the sides like this. And what I do, I just cut off the rest of this right here. And then now you just want to start on one side, stitch down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, pivot here, and then pivot one more time to the other side. And we're only going to be working on the pocket bag. So you want to move the jacket pieces out the way and just only focusing on closing the pocket bag out. Okay. So, um, do that come back and we'll continue and we'll be done with this particular um, zipper and you want to do this one this one and then the other one on the other side the same exact way and then we're going to start on the welt but before we continue i want to give you another option an easier option to put this in so if you're doing this method go ahead do this and finish and if you're doing a second option we'll do it right after this okay so we're back from the machine as you can see i went ahead and closed out the pocket bag and then also last step is you want to start on one side and top stitch a quarter inch away from the side, pivot across the top, and then you want to stop on this side here. And you'll have everything top stitch all the way around. And then when you open it up, you'll see that denim right there instead of the lining, okay? So, and this is how it looks on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the other method if you um, enjoy that one a little bit better. So I went ahead and did a slanted um, binding box representing the jacket. And this right here is the pocket bag. So what we're gonna do is we're going to place it on top and we're going to match up the binding box on the pocket bag and then also the jacket. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to start on the bottom in the corner and I'm going to go all the way until I get to the other dot here. So we're gonna back stitch at the beginning also the end. And then once you cut your threads, we're gonna do the top the same way. We're gonna start in one corner where that dot is, go all the way across and then back stitch at the end. But then we're gonna keep the sides open. We're not gonna do all the way around the box, okay? So do the top and then do the bottom, come back and we'll continue. And then once you get it like this, you wanna go ahead and slash in the center and then you want to cut until you get about, about five eighths of an inch or half inch. And then you want to cut into each corner, creating a triangle like you see right here. Okay. And mind you, we won't be cutting to our marking. So if you're off a little bit, don't worry about it. You want to cut directly where you stop stitching. Okay. So I'm doing it on this side. And then now we're just gonna turn all this to the inside. Okay. And once you lay it flat, it's gonna look like this. And then you can take your, your triangles and make sure that they are facing outward. So just head to your pressing table and give this a good press. Okay, so after you give it a good press, you can go ahead and close out your sides by just stitching right there at the bottom of that triangle here and then also here and then once you get to this section here you can go ahead and take your zipper and center it right here and then you can pin it in place like this so once you get here only thing left to do is the top stitch okay um, like I said the only difference is you have the zipper tape on top of the lining and it won't be inside the lining. That's why I show you the other method first and then this one right here is a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, but um, just those details won't be um, in there like the first one, okay? 
So pick whichever option you want and we'll continue to move along to our welt pocket with flap. Okay, so moving along to our welt pocket with the flap. So first thing you wanna do is, you wanna make sure that you have your marking and then everything that's up under here, you wanna make sure it's out the way. So take your pocket bag, move it out the way and then take this one right here and move that one out the way. And then now we have a flat surface to work with. And then this right here is the pocket bag for it. And once again, I've already showed you how to create that, that facing piece so you can have your fabric as soon as you open the zipper up, unless that doesn't matter to you and you just and you can see lining. Or if you cut lining out of the same exact fabric, and then you won't have a problem at all, okay? So first, what you wanna do is we're gonna grab our welt pocket and then we're going to fold it onto itself, right sides facing. And we're gonna stitch five eighths of an inch here. And then also here, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place. And then now you wanna grab your flap. So this is gonna be right size facing, so just take your flap. One is supposed to be interface like this. And then we're gonna pin a few times just to keep it in place. And then we're gonna to head to the machine. We're gonna start on one side, stitch using five eighths of an inch, and then pivot when you get to the corners and across the bottom. And then we're gonna stop here. We're gonna do all of that using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? So do both of these, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and just trim a little bit off, just like that. Turn right side out. Okay, I'm gonna get it a good press. And then also, see right here on the pattern piece, there's a dot after you fold the, after you fold it in half like that, that dot is 3 eighths of an inch away from the bottom. After you get it a good press on the bottom, you're gonna turn it upside down and we're going to measure from the edge 3 eighths of an inch. And then we're going to put a guide, okay? Just like this, okay? So this right here is gonna match up to the bottom of the binding box for the welt, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place. Now I'm doing this because it makes it a little bit more accurate. Now the welt is first, and then the lining is second, and then the back of the lining is facing up, okay? And then now I'm gonna trim the corners first, and then trim in from the corners just a little bit. So now I'm gonna turn it right side out. Okay, so you wanna give this a really good press then after you give it a good press, now this is how the flap is gonna be. The interface part is supposed to be on the outside to give it a little bit more stability. And then I'm just gonna flip it up. And because on the pattern piece here, the top of the flap is five eighths of an inch away from the edge, we're going to measure, gonna measure up five eighths of an inch, just like this and we're going to give a guide, okay? So this guide here goes on the top of that bounding box, okay? So I like to do it like this first to make sure that everything is even. Then I make sure that that line is touching the top. And then I will pin. So go ahead and stitch across the top and then stitch across the bottom. Now mind you, if your welt is not touching um, both sides, it? it might be a little shorter, it might be because of your fabric, um, you don't wanna go all the way to the end. You wanna stop wherever your fabric is stopping, okay? So go ahead, base stitch here and then base stitch across the bottom, come back and we'll continue. So I'm back from the machine, I went ahead and did the top first and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim I'm gonna trim down to about a quarter inch for the flap. And then that way, 
the extra is out the way and I'll be able to stitch down the welt. Okay, so do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. As you can see right here, I have a stitch across the bottom and then top. And I'm gonna flip it like this. You can see that the welt is here. You can see that the welt is on the bottom and then the flap is right here on top. Okay, now that I have, we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and align the bottom stitch with the bottom here of the bounding box. And then I'm gonna align the top with the top. So now we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to do a regular stitch from that point to this point and then from that point to that point, okay? Making sure you back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, keeping everything out the way, all the pocket bags here and here, flip this around and now we're just going to slash in the center through all thicknesses. Okay, and then we're gonna work on one side, we're gonna slash until we get about five eighths of an inch away and then we're gonna go into the corners but we're gonna slash where your stitching stops not where your, your marking is, because you might be a little off with the markings. Okay, so now we're just gonna take this and turn everything in to the inside. Now on the back, you want to turn everything up and make everything flat, okay? So go ahead and give that a good press. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so after you give it a good press, I'm gonna go ahead and just fold it down just so you can see. This is how you're gonna close it up later and it's a perfect fit, as you can see. So then now I'm just going to turn it right side up, okay? So what we're going to do first is we're gonna close out the sides where the triangles are. So you wanna start at the top, back stitch, and then you wanna stitch all the way down, okay? I'm gonna pin here. You wanna stitch, after you close that out, you wanna stitch all the way down here, and then pivot across the bottom. And then on the other side, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna pivot here, and then we're gonna close out the side making sure that we have both sides secured, okay? And then once you do that, only thing left to do is to add stitch on the edge of the welt here, and then also add stitch on the welt here. So we'll do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm all done. Um, also, I didn't mention, but before you attach your flap, you can top stitch it if you want to, it's optional. Um, if you're at this step and you forgot to, you can just fold it here and just top stitch it, making sure that it's the only thing on the machine. And then also another option for your, your welt, that like the instructions show you, you can fold it wrong size touching and then you can stitch it basically like this and turn it up. And then you'll have the extra being caught underneath. But because I don't want all that bulk, I cut mine the way I did and I just top stitched it on both sides. So you can do it either way. And then next you'll add your snaps, you add your top one here, and then your bottom one right there. So before I demonstrate how to put in your snaps, because we'll be putting them in, in a few different places, um, I want you to go ahead and grab your belt loop um, piece. And you have two options. You can turn this right sides facing, and you can stitch a quarter inch and then turn it right side out. But because this is very thin, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to turn it right side out without getting too many um, complications. So what I'm gonna do, what I've done was, I went ahead and add stitch along the long sides. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn under about a half inch and give it a press. And then I'm gonna overlap that and then give it a press. And then once I have it like that, I'm going to add stitch on this side and then add stitch on the other side. All right, so do that, come back and we'll continue or you can just turn it right sides facing, do the three eighths of an inch and then turn everything right side out. Okay, so once you have your belt loop pressed, you can go ahead and we're gonna make four, three and a quarter inches each. 
All right, so three and one quarter inches. Once I get the first one, I can go ahead and cut the other three out. Okay, just like this. So now I'm going to move everything out the way, and there should be two dots here, two sets of two sets of two dots, two here and then two there, and then the same on our right front. Okay, so our right front is here. We have two right here. And then we're going to grab one. What we're going to do is we're going to turn under a half inch on both sides, and then we're going to place them right where our markings are. And what we're going to do is you don't want them to be super flat. You want to like have a little give in them like this. Okay. So now you can just head over to your machine and you can just top stitch this down quarter inch away from the fold. Okay. You want to do that for both sides. And then you want to do your other belt loops the same exact way. Okay. So once you get all of your belt loops stitched down, it's going to look just like this for both sides. So now I'm just going to demonstrate one time on how to do a snap okay so I have my placement here all right so I just made a little small hole with my seam ripper so once you get the top in this one right here is the bottom for that and then we're gonna use the side that's smooth and not the side that has the indention okay and then like that this particular set comes with this tool and then the bottom plate now, I would suggest using these because this is um, by far one of the most easier ones to use. If not, you have to get the tools that go with, with whichever one you do. And then you just take the hammer and knock it down. Okay, and then now it's set. So before I put the bottom in, I usually don't go with the extra marking because it might not line up once I start sewing. So I just go and I I put some pressure down like that, and then that'll give me a circular space. And then now I can mark the center of that indention I put down. These right here sometimes come with them, or you can buy them separately. And then this right here is the bottom, so I'm going to be putting this in through here, making sure that I'm not going through my lining. So now I'll take the plate, turn it upside down where you see the indention, and then you just want to lay that on top of that plate. And then this one right here is the top for this one. Okay, so I'm going to grab my tool again, and I'm going to hammer everything down. Okay, so now I can just snap that up. So now that I have this snapped down, it's going to be secured throughout the rest of the process. Okay, now that you see we have um, the bottom of the snaps here, so later on we can have them snap down and then also the collar, but for right now we had to put these in place. So now we're pretty much set, and now we're going to take our zipper and attach it to our front pieces. Now you should be using a 22 inch zipper. Uh, mine's a little bit longer just so I can show you how to adjust it. Now to adjust it, you're going to need this tool right here. Now it looks kind of like a set of pliers, but with this weird curved um, top to it. Um, I don't know the official name for it, but you should. But you can look up um, zipper pliers or something similar to that, and they should pop up. Um, before we use these, we're going to go ahead and attach the zipper. So there should be two dots here and here, and then here and here. Now they should line up right here and right there. Now we want the top of our zipper pull to stop right, just right up under the, the dot up top here. So what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a marking on here, okay? And then just right across from that, I'm gonna do the same thing here. And then I'm going to just take that and make sure I'm putting it on the other side too. So I have the top mark. So what I'm going to do is I have my zipper face down and then I'm going to place this 5 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge and then I'm going to pin. I'm just going to pin here and I'm going to keep that same distance all the way up. So let me go ahead and separate this already since I went ahead and marked it. And then I'm going to do 
the same thing here. Now I need to make sure that I have them in the exact same place. And then also that the markings are in the exact same place too. So now we're just gonna head to the machine and we're going to base this down using the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, I went ahead and based both of these down on both sides in the correct um, place. And right now, I'm going to show you how to use your tools to adjust your zipper if it's too if it's too long. So first, what I'm going to do, so you know specifically where you want to take and adjust your zipper. So I want to go ahead and take the very end. So this is the only one that we're going to reuse so you want to take this portion right here and then you want to put that right in between right in between that's that end and then you put a little pressure on it okay and it opens up just like this okay that's how it opens up okay so we're going to hold on to this what I like to do is I like to set it to see where it's going to, to stop. So if it's going to stop right here, I'm going to have to take all of these out. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right here and apply pressure in the middle of the corals like this. And then once you get a good grip, you just want to rip them off. Okay. So mine was a little tough. Kind of took some of my zipper tape but I was able to save it. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take this. I was able to save it. My zipper tape, it kinda of, kind of roughed up. And then you just wanna take some regular pliers and then smash down both ends. Okay. And then now we have that secured. So now you wanna do the other one the same exact way. And next you want to keep about at least a little over a half inch of extra you will have it enough to fold under okay about like that all right so now you want to do the other one the same exact way and we'll continue okay so now that I have both zippers um, adjusted and I have them at the same exact length you're gonna take your right front and we're going to match up the notches first and then pin all the way down just so you know, when you get here to the top of your zipper, you want to go ahead and, and fold towards uh, the zipper tape, the extra zipper tape at the top, and then you can pin that down. Okay, so using a zipper foot so you can get close to the edge of the zipper teeth underneath, you can feel where those corals are. are. So we're gonna start at the top, we're gonna to backstitch and we're gonna sew all the way down. And we're gonna stop here at the large dot at the end, okay? So do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I'm back from the machine, you wanna go ahead and turn this to this side here, making sure that our seam allowance is towards the side seam. And then we're just gonna head back over to the machine and we're going to top stitch. After you give it a good press, we're gonna top stitch starting here all the way down until we get to um, the end of the zipper tape, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so once we have the top stitch here, on this side, you wanna make sure that you didn't have your pocket bag in the way, everything supposed to be out the way when you top stitch that. And then we're just gonna put this to the side for right now, and we're going to work on our back pieces. So here go our back pieces, right sides facing. There are three notches to indicate that back seam. And you wanna go ahead and just head to the machine. We're gonna stitch across that back seam using a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. You wanna back stitch at the beginning and also at the end and come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that I have them stitched together, I went ahead and push my seam to one side. I pushed it to the right and then I gave it a good press and then on the right side, I went ahead and top stitch right here on the left. So you can see I have the seam allowance face this way. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to take the lower back piece and right sides together. We're going to pin them. I'm going to turn it upside down to pin it better. There should be two notches, one here and then one here. So 
So we do the same exact thing. You want to stitch all the way across using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. When you get to the middle, you might have to tug a little bit to lay it flat. But other than that, just give it a good um, regular straight stitch. Okay, now that we have the back attached, I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance up and then I top stitched on this side here where the seam allowance is and gave it a good press. So now I'm just going to slide it down and we're gonna work on this portion right here. We're gonna take our back facings and we're going to align up our notch with our notch on the side. We're gonna pin, okay. And then you want to attach the other one the same exact way. Okay, so we're gonna stitch starting on at the top, five eighths of an inch all the way down to this side, and then we're gonna do this side the same exact way. So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to about a quarter inch. And then now we're just going to turn this to the inside, just like this. So we're gonna get this a good press and we're going to top stitch about a quarter inch away from that folded edge, okay? So you want to turn this side around and top stitch the same exact way, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and went ahead and top stitch, as you can see right here. And then now you see the wrong side up. And then now I'm going to take the back, it's the side backs, and then I'm going to match up the notches onto here, and we're going to pin. So we're going to move this out of the way. You don't want to be stitching onto your back, your back pieces. So we're gonna stitch here, all the way here, and then right here using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you want to pin and sew your other side the same exact way. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, I stitched along here. And then after that, you want to baste here and then baste here, okay? So since this is done, we're gonna move along to our left and our right um, belt loops, okay? So here are our belt loops. Um, what we're going to do is, this right here is the right belt loop. So we're going to turn it onto itself, right sides facing, and we're going to pin it in place. Okay, so once you have this one like this, we're gonna start it here, then we're gonna pivot at that point, and then pivot one more time here, and then go all the way down to the end using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? Not five eighths of an inch, but three eighths of an inch. And then the same thing for the left belt loop. We're just gonna turn it right sides facing, and this one here, we're gonna keep both ends open. So we're just going to pin and then sew across, okay? So we're just gonna start on one end here. We're gonna stitch all the way across using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? So do both of these, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now that we're back from the machine, I went ahead and turned it right side out, gave it a good press, and then I top stitched all the way around um, with like a three eighths of an inch or a quarter inch um, top stitch. And then the same thing for the other one. So now I'm going to turn it right sides facing and I'm going to pin it right where you see those two dots. And also I'll put two notches just in case. So they're gonna fit right in between there. And then the same for this one, right sides, right sides facing. You wanna place them right in between those two dots. And then now we're just going to head to the machine and we're gonna base these down, okay? Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Base down and stitch down together. We're going to take our fronts, and then we're gonna place them over our shoulders, okay? So right sides facing, we're going to match up our notches first. And then we're gonna do the other one the same exact way. All right, so just head to the machine. We're going to stitch both shoulders down using a five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, now I have them 
attached at the shoulders. I went ahead and pressed my seam allowance towards the front and I top stitched. And then I went and did a basing stitch starting at that dot you have right here. And then I went all the way around and I ended at the other dot here. So when it comes to our epaulets or tabs, whatever you want to call them, you want to turn them right sides facing just like we did our belts. I'm just going to pin them down and then we're going to start on one end and stitch and then pivot until we get right here where we our fold meets and we're going to do that using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I repeat, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Pin this one and stitch down the same exact way. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and turned the right side out and then I top stitched them about a quarter inch away from the edge. So now I'm about to take them and then work on our shoulder seam. And also you can see that I went ahead and put my snap on too. So you just want to match up right there in the center. You have a notch indicating where that seam is. And then you want to do the other one the same exact way. Like that. Now go ahead and base these down here at the shoulder. And then after you do that, you can go ahead and add the bottom piece of your snap where this snap stops, okay? So go ahead and do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, next we're gonna take our upper collar, which is the uninterfaced one, and then our under collar, which is the interface collar. And we're going to line them up and we're going to pin. Now the under collar is just a tad bit smaller. So we're going to pull and, and pin. And the same thing when we sew, we're gonna pull and stitch. Okay, so we're gonna head to the machine. We're gonna start on one end, stitch up, cross the top, and then down the other side, leaving the bottom open. And we're gonna do that using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you wanna back stitch at the beginning and also at the end, come back and we'll continue. Okay, now we're back from the machine. We have these stitched together. We wanted to go ahead and trim those corners. And then just trim that down just a little bit. Turn the right side out and point out your corners. Now head to the machine and give this a good press. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. I went ahead and top stitch about three eighths of an inch, a quarter inch away from the edge. And then across the bottom here, I went ahead and based. And also it should be about an eighth of an inch longer, the um, top, the upper collar, it's because it rolls down so you won't see that seam, okay? So now I'm just gonna grab the jacket here and I'm going to place it right into the neckline, the opening, okay? So I have a notch here that I'm going to place and pin and then I put another notch or a dot, depends on how you marked it where that shoulder seam is. Now we're gonna to head to the machine and we're just going to base this down all the way across, stopping at both ends, okay? Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I went ahead and just pinned our collars together and then next we're gonna work on our side panel. So this right here is the side. We're connected at the shoulder but not at the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that this way so it could be caught within the seam. Grab my side panel and then right sides facing, I'm going to pin this way. There are a few notches you, you can match up. And then with this side, I'm gonna do the same exact thing, match up my notches. Okay, so now we just head to the machine. We're gonna stitch one side down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance and then the other side the same exact way. And then you wanna pin your other side panel and stitch it the same exact way and come back, we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, we went ahead and attached our side panel and then pressed our seams towards the front and then also towards the back. And now we're gonna move along for our sleeve construction. Now, before we get started, 
I want you to go ahead and do two rows of gathering right here. You should have a double notch here and a single notch here. Um, do two rows of gathering stitches and we're just going to gather in just a little bit on the back of the sleeve. And if you don't know what gathering stitches are, it's basically you want to extend your thread to like a 5.0 and then do two rows of that. Backstitch at the beginning, but not at the end, and then pulling your threads, and then it'll gather up together. So right here, as you can see, I went ahead and cut into my sleeve. It comes like this, and then you want to cut out a little opening here just for the fabric. For the lining, you want to go straight across without cutting this out. And then once you get here, you want to cut up and then go into your corners. And then also you want to do some stitching. So you're going to do the stitching all the way up till you get to your dot, pivot, and then you want to go all the way down to this side. And then once you do that, you can press that seam allowance outward and then just give it a good, really good press. All right. So once you get here, you want to go ahead and grab your zipper. And then we're basically going to be putting the zipper in. That should be a marking from the hem, one and a half inches. And you want to make sure that your pull is right there. Okay. And then we're going to pin through all thicknesses and you want your teeth to be a quarter inch away from that folded edge. So before I go all the way up, I just want to do some markings. So from one half an inch, a half an inch, one and a half inch up from the edge of the hem, you want to come put a marking and that's where your zipper pull is gonna start, okay? And then you want to go all the way until we get to the end. Once you tuck in that triangle, see where that stops. And then once you mark that on your zipper, you wanna put a marking directly to the other side so you know where to stop on the other side. So I have a super long zipper, so I'm going to have to make sure I cut the extra off. Okay. And then now we have to do the other side of the zipper. And like I said before, you want to make sure that your zipper teeth is a quarter inch away from that folded edge. Okay, I'm going to zip it back up. Now, if your zipper is already is the exact length that you, you need it to be, you don't have anything to worry about. But now... Since I have like have mine like this, I'm gonna make sure I keep that triangle tucked away. And then now we're just gonna head to the machine and we're going to edge stitch from the fold. Starting here, you wanna pivot and be careful. You might want to just hand turn your, your needle um, because of the teeth, so you won't break your needle. And then once you get past that, you want to pivot and then continue edge stitching on this side. Once you get to the end, you want to go ahead and fold that back right now and then repin it. Just to zipper tape. Okay. Now this is how it looks on this side. Just got to fold it back. And then now we're just going to do our top stitching. Okay. Do that. Come back and we'll continue. Okay. Once you get back from the machine, you'll see your sleeve look like this. Okay, so now we're going to grab the sleeve inset. So this basically goes underneath here just like that. Okay, what I'm going to do is going to turn it everything wrong size facing and go ahead and clip this. And then now you should have marked your stitching lines here and that's how we're going to line up everything else. Okay, so we just want to make sure this is lined up like this, and I'm going to pin on the other side. And you basically just want to make sure that you have the stitching line matching up with the existing stitching line. Okay, so now we're going to start at the edge, and we're going to top stitch a quarter inch away from the existing stitch right here. And then we'll go up, pivot, and then come down the other side. All right, so do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, we went ahead and top stitch, and then also I top stitch um, at the existing top stitch on that edge stitch. Okay, that's just to give me a little bit more secure right here up under my zipper. So now I'm just gonna leave this just like this. Then I'm gonna grab my undersleeve, 
and we're just going to match up the notches and pin here. And now we're going to do the other side so we can do them both at the machine at one time. Okay, so we're going to head to the machine. We're going to do one side at a time. We're going to stitch all the way across using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to do the other side of the sleeve the same exact way. Okay, so do that. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine. And as you can see right here, I pressed my seams open and I turned my sleeve right side out. Okay. Also, I went ahead and did two rows of gathering stitches across from, from my double notch to my single notch, indicating the front and back. And then now I'm just going to ease in my sleeve cap just a bit. So just pull and then distribute that. Okay, and then when your sleeve cap curls up like this, you know you've done enough, at least to some degree. You don't want any puckers, so make sure it's smooth. Okay, so once you do that, you want to grab your your upper and under lining. So as you can see right here, I went ahead and sewed mine together. Basically, you're gonna do the same same thing. You're gonna pin and sew one side five eighths of an inch, and then the other side. And then remember, you don't have a cutout on your lining piece for your upper sleeve. And then also, I went ahead and did two rows of gather, gathering stitches across my sleeve cap. And then for the lining, I did a stay stitch. I basically did a 5.0 um, stitch length, but I backstitched at the beginning and also at the end, just under my armhole from my single notch to my double notch. Okay. So once you do all of that, you want to come back and we're going to, since this is already right side out, then we're going to leave the lining wrong side out. And we're basically just going to take the sleeve and put it inside the lining. Okay, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the seams and we're gonna match up our seams. And then pin. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way around using 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. I'm not gonna trim it because I want a little bit more stability in my hem. So. If I trim it down, I won't have enough seam allowance to keep this hem sturdy at the bottom. Okay, so if you want to trim it down, you could do it maybe down to like three-eighths of an inch, but I think I'm going to leave mine. And then now what I'm going to do, you want to take it, and then you just want to tuck your lining in, making sure that the wrong sides are facing on the inside. And then now, at the top, I go ahead and I start matching up my seams just so I can get a good press. So if everything is matched up, now we're just gonna temporarily pin this. We're not stitching anything together, we're just pinning. Okay, so once again, I pinned this not to sew it, I just pinned it to keep it in place, and then now we're just going to push down the jacket, roll that jacket hem up until we get no slack. There we go. And then the hem should stop right at the tip of your zipper tape. All right, so now you want to go to the machine and you want to give this a really, really good press. Now, this is what's going to tell the difference from someone that's an amateur or someone that has a little bit more skin in the game when you see um, pressed hems and pressed um, seams and make it look so crisp. Okay, so go do that come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine And we gave Our hem a really good press and then also I went and top stitch it from one zipper tape right here All the way around until I got to the other end. Okay, and I did that using a quarter inch seam allowance Okay, so after I pressed that I went ahead and pressed under my seam allowance for my lining okay and i'm gonna show you why so now let's go ahead and attach our sleeve to our jacket so first you're going to move your lining out the way and we're only going to focus focus on the jacket pieces double notch first then once i do that i'm going to work on the inside okay 
just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the machine and we're going to stitch all the way around the armhole using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then after you do that, you wanna go a quarter inch away from that, going towards the end of the fabric with another row of stitching. So you have your regular stitching at 5 eighths of an inch and then you're gonna go within that seam allowance a quarter inch away and then go all the way around, okay? So do both of those, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine and I um, went ahead and attached both of my sleeves and then also press that seam allowance towards the actual jacket and then also after you do your two rows of stitching because you're going to stitch the seam allowance first and then a quarter inch away from that you want to trim um, close to that second stitch you know so you want to leave just a little over an eighth of an inch and then on the right side press towards the jacket you want to top stitch a quarter inch away from the seam okay and then after you do that, you can snap your epaulette or tabs, whatever you want to call it. You want to put them back. And then now we're going to keep our sleeve lining loose for right now. But we, I did press under um, the seam allowance all the way around. Okay, so once you do all that, we're going to continue and stitch our facings and linings together. Okay, so we have our right front lining and then we have our... Um, pattern piece number two which is our front now we did i cut out we cut out two and one of them is supposed to be interface and this is the interface one that we'll be using so right size facing we're going to match up our notches and we're going to pin and then down here to the bottom there's supposed to be a place where we're supposed to stop stitching that dot we're going to pin there also while we're here we're going to grab our left front facing and our left front lining. Before we pin it, I just want you to know we have a stay stitch right here between notches. So you just want to do a long baking stitch, I say a 5.0, and then stitch all the way here. Back stitch beginning and end, so we have that stay stitching. And then you can continue to match up everything. Okay, so now that we have both of them pinned, we're going to head to the machine and we're going to Stitch starting from the top and stitching all the way down till we get to the dot. Back stitch at the beginning and also at the end and come back and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, I went ahead and press the seam allowance towards the side seams as you can see right here. And then now I'm just going to go to our back lining. So I went ahead and I prepped quite a bit. So with the back lining, we have a stitching line here that stops right there so you want to do that first and then you want to do you want to back the beginning and also at the end and then you want to start at this regular seam allowance and go all the way down okay and then once you press that seam towards um towards the left it's going to be on the right back but towards the left if it's wrong side up and then after that i went ahead and attached the side panel and i pressed that seam towards the back and i did that for the same thing here. All right, so next I'm just going to take our facing and lining and we're going to match up our notches and we're going to pin. Okay, the other side. And then also while we're here, we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and pin that side panel. So first what we're gonna do is gonna stitch across the shoulder and then also across the side panel. Do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so moving along, we have our side panels put in like, you, like I showed you. And then just remember on the right front, um, the right front lining, we have to trim off three fourths of an inch, okay? And um, that'll match up the side panel if you're having an issue matching that up. Okay, so once you do all that, we're gonna move along to our lower facings. And we're gonna be putting on, we're gonna be putting it on the lower part of our uh, jacket. But first you wanna grab your lower right facing and then your lower left facing. And there should be a notch at the, at the bottom. And we're gonna stitch across that using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then after you do that, we're going to press that seam open 
I'm just going to turn on the seam allowance and we're just going to give that a good press all the way down. So do all of that, come back and we'll attach it to our jacket. Okay, now that I'm back from the machine, um, like I said, I went ahead and finished the unnotched edge and this right here is the right lower facing. And then at the end here, I'm just going to fold back that seam allowance and I'm just going to match that up exactly right here. And we're going to pin. And then I want to match up those notches. Using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you want to do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, I went ahead and attached the lower band. And now I'm going to take the facing and the lining. And we're right size facing. I want to tuck those sleeves in. And also your straps and get them out the way. Now down here at the corner, don't you forget that we have to move that band out the way in order to pin. Okay, just like that. Then we're gonna turn in that collar so we can pin across the neckline. Okay, so hold on in there. We're gonna be done in just a moment. What I want you to do, we're going to start on this side and then this side right here is where we have the zipper teeth literally right there from the seam. So you want to be careful. You can use your zipper foot. So we're just going to start here, back to the beginning, six five eighths of an inch all the way around. You want to pivot at your markings, then pivot here across the neckline, pivot all, across, all the way across here and we're going to come down and then at this corner here, we're gonna pivot one more time and make sure you put your, you wanna put your zipper pull out the way so we can get back here to that dot. And you wanna back stitch at the end, okay? So you wanna do all of that, come back and we will continue. Okay, so I'm back from the machine and as you can see, I went ahead and stitched all the way around. Okay, so I just want to Zoom in real close for you. So this right here is the right side. As you can see, I went and I pivot down and I finished up right here, okay? And then on the left side here, I went ahead and fold back that facing and then I stitched on top of that band right there where the seam allowance is, okay? So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna trim out all of our corners here, here and then if needed you can make clips along the neckline and also you want to make a clip right here where these dots are okay and then after you do that you want to turn it right side out okay so I went ahead and trimmed all of my corners as you can see right here turn it right side out and then I gave it a good press and then I top stitched along the front here and then I top stitched along the bottom and then also along this side here too Okay, as you can see. All right, so once you give it a good press, we're gonna move along and I'm just going to show you how to close out your lining. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and overlay the lining. Okay, so you just want to just pull and just let it hit naturally. And then I'm just going to hit it right there just past that seam allowance and we're going to slip stitch that, basically hand stitch it closed. And then once you get that done, you want to take your sleeve lining and overlay it just like that. And we're going to slip stitch that close. And then your lining to be done for your sleeve. You want to do the other side the same exact way. And then down here to the bottom, as you can see, I went ahead and put pins on my lining because I went ahead and pressed. You want to press the seam allowance, as you can see it right here. Press that seam allowance up, the 5 eighths. And then now, when we do that, we're going to come to the bottom and I only put pins here just to keep it in place because my fabric doesn't hold the press very good. So I'm just going to bring it up here just about a quarter inch past the lower facing and I'm going to slip stitch that all the way across the bottom. Also one more thing right here on the right side, it's going to be on your left right here though. You have that piece they want you to slip stitch that. You can slip stitch it or you can just come and stitch right where that top stitching is right here and then it'll catch underneath and that's what I did. Okay, so we're coming down to the end. 
Um, I don't want to forget anything, so I'm going to just take my time. Uh, you want to make sure that you want to do the top of these snaps right here. You want to do the, the top of those here so they can snap down, like right there. And then also here on the other side. After you do that, you want to go ahead and get your buckle. Now your buckle goes on your left side, which is right here. So basically, uh, we have a fold line at 5 eighths of an inch. It's probably going to be like right there. So what I want to do, right there with that 5 eighths of an inch, I do like maybe a quarter inch under. So right there, I want to cut a nice hole. So I want to use, I'm going to use this tool right here. Now it has a nice um, circle at the tip with the blade. So when you hit it, it'll do a complete um, circle. But if you don't have it, you can just mix, make a hole with your seam ripper and it'll be just fine. So now you place that through the hole and then it's complete just like this. The only thing you have to do, I don't like having a raw edge so I fold mine twice like this and then I use my zipper foot to get really close and I just go across that a few times and then sometimes I zigzag, do a zigzag six just to secure it. And then on this side right here, we have markings for um, eyelets, okay? So you have three markings right here for eyelets. You can create more depending on how you want them. So when it comes to putting eyelets in, they're basically not too far from the demonstration I showed with the snaps. Um, you just follow the instructions for whatever packet you, you buy or if they come with instructions. Usually you have some type of thing that you place it in and then a tool to knock them down to complete it. Okay, so once you do all those little details and cut your threads and all that stuff, um, we are all done. All right, congratulations. You created your very own motor jacket. Now, I hope you enjoyed this so long and be sure to tag me on Instagram at Norris Dancer Forward and then also tag us at Know Me Patterns. All right, see you in the next one.